So a few months ago, I posted a video called Full Frame vs. Crop Sensor, and it's been a very, very popular video, as you can imagine. It's a very confusing topic in photography, and I've been getting some repeating questions, uh, so I decided to answer them all in this video. So if you haven't seen that first video, please go watch that first. The number one most common questions and comments that I get is, should you apply crop factor to crop sensor lenses? And I've actually already answered this question in a separate video, so I'll put the link down below so you guys can watch that too. But long story very short, the answer is yes, you do need to apply crop factor to the lenses that are designed for APS-C sensors. For example, uh, this lens is Canon's EFM mount 22mm lens, and even though it's an APS-C lens and it says 22mm at the front, it does not mean it's 22mm on a crop sensor body. You still have to apply Canon's crop factor, which is 1.6, which comes out to about 35 millimeters. Now, obviously you can test this yourselves if you have a full frame camera and a crop sensor camera and some lenses that are roughly the same focal length, and you'll be able to see the framing will be very different. Now, here's where you gotta be careful. Uh, because this is a 22 millimeter lens and acts like a 35 millimeter lens on a crop sensor body, it does not mean this physically becomes a 35 millimeter lens. All that's really happening is when you put a 22 millimeter lens on a full frame camera, you get the true field of view. But when you put that same lens on the crop sensor camera, a lot of the images get cropped off from the top and the bottom and the sides because the sensor is a lot smaller. Therefore, you're getting the illusion that your focal length is becoming longer. So when you put a 22 millimeter lens on a crop sensor camera, the framing would look very similar to the picture that you get with a full frame camera with a 35 millimeter lens, but it does not mean they're the same lenses. All that's really happening is that on a crop sensor camera, that 22 millimeter view is getting cropped. So some of you might ask, why do we even have to separate crop sensor lenses then? So that's pretty simple actually, because with a crop sensor camera, with a crop sensor lens, uh, the area that you have to cover is a lot smaller than on a full frame camera because the sensor is a lot smaller. So therefore the lens can be a lot smaller too. So if you bought a crop sensor camera because it's a lot smaller and lighter than a full frame camera, then there's no point putting on those much bigger and heavier full frame lenses on it. So if you have a Sony full frame camera, you can actually test this yourself. On a Sony full frame mirrorless camera, you can attach the APS-C Sony E-mount lenses on it and what happens is you can see a heavy vignetting on the edges because those lenses are meant to cover a much smaller sensor. So again, if you have a crop sensor camera, it doesn't matter what kind of lens you use, you always have to apply the crop factor. And the second question we're gonna talk about is, should you apply crop factor to the aperture? So what about the aperture? How is the aperture affected when you move from full frame to crop sensor and vice versa? I told you that this 22 millimeter lens, whether designed for full frame or crop sensor, it's still physically a 22 millimeter lens. And the aperture still works the same way. There's a lot of confusion about this topic, so let me try to clarify this for you. So let's say I have a 22 millimeter lens for my crop sensor camera and a 35 millimeter lens for my full frame camera. These two lenses will give me roughly the same framing on both cameras. It could also be something like 35 millimeters on a crop sensor and 50 millimeters on full frame or 56 millimeters on crop sensor and 85 millimeters on full frame. Doesn't really matter. So on my how to shoot manual video, we talked about some different effects of aperture. And one of them was that with bigger aperture, you get shallower depth of field. So you get more background blur. And with smaller aperture, you get deeper or greater depth of field, so you get less background blur. And even though with these lenses, the framing that you get on a full frame and crop sensor cameras will be very similar, because on the full frame camera, you're using a longer focal length, and when you're using the same focal length, you'll be standing a little closer to the subject with the full frame because the framing will be wider. Uh, you get more compression and you get more background blur. So one of the things you have to compensate for that when you're using a crop sensor camera is well, to get more background blur, you need a bigger aperture. So in my previous video, I said, you not only have to apply the crop factor to the focal length, but you also have to apply the crop factor to the aperture to get the similar results. Because even when your framing is very similar, since you're using different focal lengths, the compression will be different and your photos will never look exactly the same. And if you don't know what I mean by compression, I'm gonna be doing a video about lens compression next, so please stay tuned to see that. And that whole applying the crop factor to the aperture thing 
it was just a rough guide. It's not a exact math. If this was like a mathematical equation, then a photo taken with a 22 millimeter lens at f2 on a crop sensor camera should look exactly the same as the photo taken with a 35 millimeter lens at f3 on a full frame camera but they are never going to look exactly the same because of the reasons that i just explained so to summarize yes you do need a bigger aperture on a crop sensor lens to get the similar results as on the full frame but that whole applying the crop factor thing it's just a guide it's not an exact math sometimes you'll find that you will need a lot more than 1.5 but if your goal is not just to get the maximum background blur Sometimes this can play as your advantage when you're using a crop sensor camera. For example, when you're taking street photography or group portraits or landscape shots, you do need deeper depth of field. And in order to get deeper depth of field, you need a smaller aperture. And if you've seen my how to shoot manual video, you'd also remember that with bigger aperture, you get more light and with a smaller aperture, you get less light. It's like a window, big window, more light, small window, less light. Easy to remember, right? So when you need to get deeper depth of field, when you're using the same focal lengths on a full frame camera, you do need to use a slightly smaller aperture because the depth of field is shallower. And because on a crop sensor camera, you're using a shorter lens to get the same focal length, you don't need to decrease the aperture as much to get the same depth of field. So that means on a crop sensor camera, you don't have to decrease your aperture as much to get the same depth of field, which results in less noise, less ISO and faster shutter speed and cleaner and sharper photo. So to recap, on a crop sensor camera, you do need a bigger aperture to match the look of the full frame. But when you need a deeper depth of field, you can use that as your advantage. Number three, full frame versus crop sensor for sports and wildlife. I got a few questions from people asking, if I could just shoot with a full frame camera and crop, then why would I even need a crop sensor camera? This one's pretty simple. Let's say you have a full frame camera and a crop sensor camera, both with a 24 megapixel sensor. And if you take a photo from the same spot using the same lens, and let's say you weren't close enough, so you have to crop in on the picture from the full frame camera. And because both cameras have 24 megapixel sensors, if you crop in, you're gonna be losing a lot of resolution. If you have a high resolution full frame camera like the Canon 5DSR or the Nikon D850, or the Sony a7R 4 then you might be able to get away with it. But not everyone has them, and I'm talking more about a one-to-one -one comparison here. So I guess the important takeaway here is that to use the correct lens for whatever you're trying to do, rather than just shooting everything and cropping in just because you have enough resolution. And also on the opposite end, when you're doing macro photography, using a crop sensor camera can also be beneficial because when you're doing macro photography, the depth of field is so shallow you often have to shoot at like f16 or f22 to get everything in focus so you need very very good lighting when you're doing macro photography but when you're using a crop sensor camera you naturally get slightly more depth of field so you can retain a little more light by using a slightly bigger aperture than you would on a full frame camera but then for whatever you're doing it's more important to have the correct lens and the proper lighting and if you know what you're doing you can pretty much do anything with whatever you have number four does a full frame sensor gather more light than a crop sensor? Lastly, I wanted to clarify something I said in the last video, and that is when I said that full frame sensors gather more light than crop sensors. Now, I realize the wording might be a little confusing, but gathering more light does not mean the exposure will be different. Let's say you have a 24 megapixel full frame sensor and a 24 megapixel crop sensor made from the same brand with same technology from the same time period. And let's say the only difference between the two is the size of the sensor. That means with a full frame sensor, because the sensor is bigger, the sizes of the pixels will be bigger. So with bigger pixels, or in other words, less pixel density, uh, your images will typically have less noise in low light and high ISO situations. Obviously in the real world, it will never be a complete apples to apples comparison. There will be many variables like I just mentioned and also your lenses will affect the outcome a lot. But typically, a full frame sensor will perform better in low light than a crop sensor if they roughly have the same megapixel count. But then again, it does not mean the exposure will be different. It does not mean with the same settings that your images from a full frame 
camera will come out brighter. It just means that the full frame camera's images will come out with less noise. So these were some of the most common questions that I've been getting about the topic full frame versus crop sensor. And if you have any more questions, obviously you can leave a comment down below and I'll try to get to them all. And I hope this is helpful and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.